Okay, now we get into the basics of the business. Um, so, so this is plain vanilla. Okay, so the, the term, the, the things that you want in the contract, some you know, the the basics of what you want in the contract are the term, the amount of time that the license is for. Um, you know, you're not going to have uh, a Star Wars license in perpetuity. There will generally be for something like a Star Wars a two-year or maybe a three-year license. If it's a corporate brand, it might be a little longer than that. Um, or for a food product, it might be a little longer than that. Um, the territory, you're not giving somebody worldwide rights. You have to define where this is going to, be, where the product is going to be sold. Is it going to be sold in the U.S., U.S. and Canada, U.S. and Canada and Mexico? If you, you can't just say, for example, Europe, because does that mean, let's see, um, the UK just left the European Union. So if I had a, a um, license that said this can be sold in the European Union, wait a minute, can I now not sell it in the UK? So you have to define where the product is going to be sold. You have to get very specific. The more specific, the better as to what the products are going to be. Um, you can't just say dolls. Most licensing contracts will say dolls up to three and a half inches tall or dolls from seven to 10 inches tall. Um, they're not just going to say housewares. They're going to say ladles and knives and whatever and get as specific as possible so that both sides know what the terms are. And what's the channel, um, the retail channel? Is it for warehouse clubs? Is it for department stores? Is it for dollar stores? Where, where are the goods going to be sold? So those are some of the things that are going to be specified in a well-written licensing contract. Excuse me. And those are the type of questions that when you do go to a brand property licensor, Mm -hmm. They're going to ask you, okay, what is what is your product? Where is it going to be sold? Uh, and there's other products uh, similar to yours, but maybe in different categories. Right. I mean, you know, you're 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 probably not going to them with a finished product. Um, you're going to their licensee. Now, this is this is you know an important point, and and um, you know, let me let me tell you how these companies are structured. You know, I think that's an important point. A company like, I'll say, the entertainment companies, Sony Pictures, Disney, Universal, Nickelodeon, they have large consumer products organizations because they're not in the business of making products. They're in the business of making entertainment. So they have large consumer products organizations. If you go to them with a product, in all likelihood, they're going to say, well, we have a licensee in that category. Why don't you go see the licensee? We don't make toys, but if you have something that'll make a good toy, why don't you go to Hasbro and Mattel and see if they can make that make sense with our with our license? Okay. Marty, um, yes. Before before this contract, so this is a manufacturer that mm -hmm. is looking to have a, a brand on their product or whatever it is. Before you get here, what what does a manufacturer look like to be able to be possibly granted one of these brand uh, licenses. It's it's a it's a very um, specific process that a manufacturer goes to gain a license from one of these entities. Um, they're going to fill out lots of paperwork, lots of financial information. Um, they're if they're looking for uh, a license to to manufacture a specific product. They're going to have to fill out probably a three-year sales plan. Um, what they expect to sell, how many, what the growth is going to be, what the pricing is going to be. So they have to fill out a very detailed uh, forecast for the license for the license owner, and that goes into the equation as for the license owner. And you know, and part of the part of it is going to be what's the royalty rate. Um, there are norms within, you know, that those brand owners have. If you want to get a Star Wars license, you're probably going to be paying 15, 16, 17 percent or a Marvel license or something like that. 
if you want a smaller, you know, a corporate brand, it's probably going to be down in the four, anywhere, depending on the category, from five to 10%. Um, but that's because look at all the marketing dollars that are put behind Star Wars. Um, right. look, at the, look at the fan base. So, so any manufacturer is going to be giving a lot of detailed information. Um, if they are granted the license, it doesn't mean that they can go off and do whatever they want. Um, there are approvals processes along the way. They have to show at each step in the design and the initial manufacturing, they have to pass muster with the brand owner. So there are lots of, it's a very, very intricate uh, kind of process for one of these manufacturers to gain the license. <laughs>